Greetings to all. My name is John Watts with Watts Digital Imaging in San Diego, California, and I'm a post-processing specialist for photographers. My motto is, you take the perfect shot, and I hope you get the absolute most out of it, your printer or mine. If you'd like to find out more, check out the video description for a link to my website, my blog, and much more, including a link to relevant notes for this video. The crop tool allows you to crop to a portion of an image to enhance the subject matter, remove an unwanted object, and or improve your composition. For example, as you can see from this image, we can creatively crop in to the bugs to improve its composition. Cropping your image in Photoshop is one of those rare functions that has both creative and procedural aspects to it. This video is about the procedural, the how-to. Once you fully understand the how-to, the creative aspect is yours to discover and explore as a photographer. So where do you find the crop tool? It can be found in the tools panel right here or by pressing its speed key, which is C. When the crop tool is chosen, notice the crop handles at not only the four corners, one, two, three, four, but on each of the sides, creating a crop box, the area being cropped. If there's no defined crop size in the option bar, such as we see here and which we'll discuss in a bit, then the crop box starts on the outside edge of the image as seen in this image also. To get started, click on a crop handle, hold the mouse button down and drag the handles to the desired crop like this. So I'm just holding my mouse button down, so on and so forth. You'll notice that the mouse cursor changes to a double-headed arrow as it's hovered over any crop handle, regardless of which one it is. Now you can click, hold, and drag any crop handle to create the crop box. You'll also notice that a grid appears, and it generally only appears after you've moved a crop handle. More on the grid throughout this video, by the way. As an aside, you can click on the Cancel button in the Options bar at any time to cancel and start over, right here. By the way, when a particular crop size is chosen in the Options bar, such as an 8x10, the crop box will stay the same aspect ratio, no matter which crop handle you drag and move. So let's say I want to make a 10x8. You can see that if I drag one handle, because of the 4x5 aspect ratio of an 8x10, the width and height dimensions are constrained to each other. In addition, hovering anywhere slightly outside the crop box will change the cursor to a 90 degree double sided arrow. Now you can easily rotate the cropped area by clicking and dragging, just like this. To create a crop in a freeform manner, regardless of the values in the options bar, click and hold inside the current crop box before you physically move a crop handle and there's no grid. Drag up and down, diagonally, wherever you need to go. Once you've got it where you want, release your mouse button and this creates a new crop box. To move the image inside the crop box, simply click and hold and move to the desired location. You'll notice, by the way, that the image moves, not the crop box. For fine tuning, with the grid still showing, hold down the Option key on a Mac, Alt on a PC, then use the arrow keys on the keyboard for small but precise adjustments, like this. So, I'm going to hit Cancel and show you what's in the Options bar. The Options bar at the top of the workspace is where you'll set all the various parameters and preferences for the Crop tool. Note that the buttons Reset, Cancel, and Commit on the right side of the Options bar won't appear until you initiate a crop, such as moving a crop handle like this. And now you can see that there is a Reset, Cancel, and Commit button. Below you'll find a graphic which shows the various options that we're going to dig into. I'll show you these going from left to right. Let's start with the Presets drop-down menu over here on the left-hand side. This gives you a series of preset crop sizes. In the spirit of KISS, keep it super simple. I rarely use this menu, but it would be handy if you need to create your own custom crop presets. The next item in the Options bar is the Aspect Ratio drop-down menu right here. These are presets for some popular aspect ratios of photography. Just to remind you, we talked about this earlier, the aspect ratio of an image is the ratio of its width to its height. For instance, a typical DSLR camera has an aspect ratio of 3 to 2, and an 8x10 print is 4 to 5, and so on. Again, in the spirit of KISS, keeping it super simple, I rarely use these presets, preferring to manually enter the values for width, height, or resolution. So I'll click right here. Or for ultimate creativity and cropping, I may not want to be limited by a fixed aspect ratio unless a particular final print size calls for it. 
So this is my preferred method, assuming that I'm creating a custom crop to maximize the creative aspects of the image. I'll leave the width and the height boxes empty, not at zero by the way, but by deleting any values with the delete key on my keyboard. I'll generally leave the resolution at 300 ppi because that's the best resolution for a master file in printing, which of course is my primary area of interest. The next item is the swap width and height function, which is right here. And this is pretty self-explanatory. If you put values in here, and I'll put 10 inches by 8 inches, it allows you to reverse those values. So perhaps I've entered these values incorrectly, or I want to see what a vertical crop will look like. I'll click here. And of course the next item is the clear button. And again, that's self-explanatory. I can click here and all those values disappear. And I'll hit cancel. The next item is the straighten function. And I'm going to use this new image to show you how this works. If the horizon of your digital image is not straight, it can be really distracting, like you see here. Here's an easy way to straighten it in Photoshop. First, activate the crop tool. So I'll do that right here. Next thing is you want to clear the width and height and resolution values. I'll use the clear button. The next thing is to press the straighten icon in the options bar. Now, while holding down your left mouse button, draw a line along the horizon in your image. For this image, the horizon has some curvature to it, so I'm going to use the water line on the rock formation like this. And you can go left to right or right to left, it doesn't matter. When I let up off the mouse button, the image is straightened and cropped so that the crop box fills the image. If you need to reshape your crop box, by the way, do it now, otherwise just leave it alone. Commit to the crop by pressing the commit button, the check mark, in the options bar, like this. And voila, your horizon is now straight. By the way, this technique works equally well if you need to straighten vertically, such as architectural photography. So I've gone back to the bug image to show you these last few items in the options bar. The next item is the View Overlay drop-down menu, and it's right here. Here's an easy way to judge the crop properly with a grid overlay. By default, the grid overlay is the rule of thirds, which is what you've seen throughout this video. Be sure to check out the other views. If you need to remove the overlay, just click on Never Show Overlay. The next item is the Options Crop Shield drop-down menu. I never check Use Classic Mode, it's outdated and slow, but I do check Enable Crop Shield. It helps to visualize what the final crop will look like before committing to it, which we'll talk about in just a second. I typically use Match Canvas at 75% opacity, but feel free to play with the color and opacity options. So it looks something like this. I'm going to freeform this crop, and you can see the crop shield outside of the crop box. The next item is pixel data, and it's right here. This determines if pixel data outside of the crop box is retained or deleted. I leave this button on as shown, which deletes the pixel data. It's still in the master file if needed. The next item is the reset button. Pressing this clears the crop box, image rotation, and aspect ratio settings. I rarely use it. The next item is the cancel button. This completely cancels the current crop operation and you'll lose all settings. By the way, the escape key in your keyboard does the exact same thing. Once you have everything set the way you want it, pressing the check symbol commits to the current crop operation, like this. And that's how you accurately crop an image in Photoshop Creative Cloud. I'm John Watts. Thanks again for watching this video. And be sure to check out the video description for a link to my YouTube channel, my website, my blog, and much more. Questions? Feel free to contact me. Think of me as your Photoshop coach. Cheers, and have a great day.